You're listening to SM Media, the number one place for exclusive content. Hi everyone and welcome to the latest episode of the Scottish Football Show Extra right here on SM Media. I'm Scott McPike, it's an absolute pleasure to be your host as always. It's a comic special this week, we've actually got a wee bit of a different setup. Usually as you, as you know if you're a regular viewer of this show we do it with a, a manager and a player from the, one of the teams in the West of Scotland Premier Division. We haven't been able to obviously do that, obviously due to the manager situation at Cumnock which has only been resolved as of yesterday. So we're delighted to be joined by... The Cumberland captain, Kyle McCausland. Kyle, it's a pleasure to welcome you back on the show. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having us again, Scott. Thank you, mate. An absolute pleasure. I'm really looking forward to this. And we're also delighted to be joined by the Cumberland goalkeeper, Kieran Hughes. Kieran, how are we? I'm all good, Scott. Hi, pleasure to be on, mate. It's a pleasure to have you on. We're looking forward to this. Obviously, we'll we'll touch a bit in the manager situation later on. Obviously, it's been a bit of a hectic few weeks, but we'll touch a wee bit in the, the season so far. 13th in the league, seven wins, one draw, 10 defeats, 22 points. Kyle, was it safe to say it's been there's been good points and not so good points so far in the season? I think it's easy to say that, Scott, to be honest with you, mate. Um, you, don't, you don't need to look too hard at the league table and the games you've won, the games you've been beat to, to realise that. Um, it's been obviously off a inconsistent for a lot of the season. You go, I mean, the team teams have beat this year. You go and beat B, you go beat Pollock. Um, go beat Buffs, go beat Darvo. I mean, unlucky against Talbot. I mean, you're up to an out half time, and then you go and, like you said last week, there you get beat by obviously Rutherglen. So it's highs and lows, and that's obviously something as a as a squad and as a team that we obviously need to get better at. Kieran, what's it been like, obviously, coming into Cumnock, and what's been your thoughts in the overall season so far? Uh, ups and downs, as Kyle's mentioned. So to go and win against probably like the not to say the better teams league, but the teams that you maybe not expect to pick up three points, and we went and done that uh, against the majority of them. And then obviously maybe to let ourselves down in some other games. I think uh, there's plenty of positives still to take out of the season. There's plenty of games still to play at. I generally think there's a lot of confidence still to come into the team. So, but aye, it's been ups and downs, but aye, I'm sure we'll get there eventually. I, I mean, the season started well in the league, obviously. The 1 0 home win to Bees and a 4 1 away win to Rossfield. Okay, we couldn't have started any better after two games. Definitely, no. I mean, obviously, first game of the season, Bees. I mean, Bees are a right good, good team. Obviously, with, with, with Butch being the, the manager now as well, um, it's obviously a, a new thing for him. But I mean, Bees are a, a hard place to go to. And when you're playing home against them, I mean, they're a hard team to play. Um, so to, to come up, obviously, one the one first game of the season against a team who is usually there or thereabouts for, for winning leagues and winning cups. I mean, it was a, it was a great start. Second game, as you said, Ross failed to, to one four one. I think that game as well. I mean, it could have been six or seven or eight. I think as well. It was a it was a really good performance. Um, and it was a as you said, it was a, a cracking start to the season. Even one goal conceded in the first two games. It, it looked pretty good at the start, didn't it? Well. When I first joined, it was actually six games, no goals. And then to follow on to that, it was the first two games, I, it was looking well. But obviously, one goal conceded in the first two. So, uh, And to be honest with you, the first goal was that we conceded that year was a penalty as well. So you're looking at maybe two queen sheets it could have been. Uh, if it was the for a daft left back, jumping in. <laughs> uh, we started, started brilliantly and we were looking up in the league, to be honest with you. I think we were sitting third at one point. So Tony at the time was actually mentioning us to, we had a game in the Wednesday night and if we won that, maybe to go first or second. So, um, aye, it was a great start, to be honest with you. But as I say, the the, the next couple of games are a bit, a bit tougher. Cumberland played by in the next two games were both defeats. The, the Cumberland defeat at home must have been disappointing, Kyle. A, a, a 3-1 defeat in the, after you had such a good start. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think it wasn't, a, it wasn't a great team performance, but the... The kind of three one, I suppose, kind of flatters him a wee bit. I mean, the last kind of five ten minutes, you're chasing the game to try and make it two two. They break my last last kick of the ball to make it three one. So, as obviously as for it is, um, but it was obviously really disappointing to, as you said, obviously to to win against B, to win comfortable against Rossville. Your first two games, then go and lose your next two. 
Kieran, would you go along with that? The two defeats to Cumberland and Clyde Bank after such a good start were quite disappointing. I, I think in the Cumberland game, if I remember right, we lost an early goal. And uh, I think that was the first time we went behind at the start of another league game. So we kind of maybe tested this a wee bit. Uh, we didn't get a man sent half in the second half as well. So it was a, it was a tough struggle, to be honest with you, that Cumberland game. The Clyde Bank game, uh, so I've, I've kind of loved this goal, didn't the boys scored an absolute world day for 45 years. And I've, every time I get into my work, it gets mentioned to me. So I've not <laughs> lived that one. So I, that was a, the two games back to back were, were tough. But the, I say the boys bounced back at the weekend there, I'm sure, if I remember right. Um, and that's kind of what it was like at the start of the season, a wee bit up and a wee bit down. So, aye. And Lags, obviously, he's going to Lags and pick up a massive 2 1 win. And then the, the two losses to Rob Roy and Meadow. Kyle, that Lags game was obviously a big win. Was it, was it disappointing as well that he's couldn't kind of build on that against Rob Roy and Meadow? Aye, same again. It's, you obviously want to put a run of games together. I mean, especially the obviously earlier in the season. I mean, if you put the games there, you go one, four, five at your first seven. I mean, it stands in great stead, I mean, for the rest of the season. Um, but obviously, as you said, obviously at the beginning, I has been ups and downs. Um, and that's something obviously we need to work on. Kieran, obviously that lags win was a big result for the, the dressing room. Would you go along with that? Obviously, the, a big result against a team who probably would have been the, the similar targets to use at the start of the season? Uh, 100%. See, if you get into lags and you pick up three points and... And the wind machine, it's it's not an easy place to go, to be honest with you, next to the water. So, <laughs> I we done well. We never looked in doubt in that game, to be honest with you. And I think that was maybe the most comfortable I felt. We played that full se- well, at the full start of that season there. Um, they never really troubled as we went. Turn it up. You stupid goal to start the second half. But apart from that, I, we done well. The next three games were, were all one nils. Two went for you, one went against you. The home wins against Pollock and the Buffs and I lost to Hurlford. Kyle, they are two massive wins against two mm-hmm. teams who are expected to contend. They must have been a massive boost of confidence. Same again. I mean, it's similar to the Beard game. I mean, it's it's a game where if you're picking up a point, you're taking it. If you pick up three, I mean, you're, you're buzzing. Um, again, two good, good performances for the team, for the boys. Um, obviously, you're hoping that maybe that's you can maybe turn the corner a wee bit. Again, harder teams. Uh, the Hurlford game, I mean, I, I think in all my years, in fact, when that's the angriest I've been, I think obviously Big Cairn will tell you that. I was getting a bottle of, a bottle of water through the changing room wall, um, screaming and shouting, but that's been kind of the story of the season, really. It's been, you go and do well, and then you do, do all right for a couple of games, a couple of games you're not doing so well. I, I would say you know. that uh, frustration was kind of built up, wasn't it, Kyle? Mm-hmm. To the fact that, like, you go and do so well against Paul, yeah. go and do so well against the uh, co-winning and then they kind of throw that away against Hurlford because I didn't think Hurlford were a better team than us on the night nah. you won it same again we'd, we'd maybe six maybe seven one on one chances Aye. and their goalie to be fair to me he didn't save the ball we kicked the ball off him <laughs> that's, that's what it was like it was hitting uh, off his head hitting off his elbow hitting off his stomach I mean it wasn't a great saves when it was world the saves or whatever that was a frustrating thing um, to obviously get beat a game where you did dominate and you didn't take the three points at the end of the day, that sort of matters. Kieran, would you go along with that? There were the, it was two massive wins at home and obviously you kept two clean sheets. How big were they for, for yourself and obviously for the team? Definitely, aye. It's, 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 if you give your guys a clean sheet to go and build on something, then you've, you've already got yourselves a point there, haven't you? So that's probably the main thing that we looked for that in the two games. Give yourselves a, uh, the strike to go and build on something, get us three points, in which you did. Um I say the horrible one disappointed me. The fact that we did have that many chances and it just was a case where we couldn't get the ball in the net. We could probably score quite for a fortnight and no score. <laughs> by the game. So I think the season's, I say, well, only not even halfway through and we are due to gear team are doing. I think so. Hopefully that will come soon. <laughs> the Talbot game obviously couldn't have started any better. It was two and a half at half time. Okay, what happened? What, what went wrong in the second half? I think kind of similar to what Cairns just said there, I think we could talk for two weeks about what was wrong with it and you wouldn't put your finger on it. Um, I think it's, it's the credit to Talbot, do you know what I mean? It's what Talbot have done for, for years. I mean, second half, playing to the 95th minute, never beat, never never die attitude kind of thing. Um, an unbelievable start to look 2-0 at home. 
same again, Talbot were, were, weren't even in it in the first half. But it was the, the proper cliche of the game of two halves. You go from being very, very comfortable, dominating the game to the second half, terrible. I mean, there's no, there's no other words or anything else to say about it. Just terrible. Here in 2-0 up at half-time against Locking Lake, it couldn't have went any better. Second half, not so much. To be honest with you, Scott, I don't think I touched the ball the first half. I was loving it. It's like you play against Tal when it's an onslaught for 90 minutes. So, you're the granny half time with 2-0 up. You're thinking, fuck, that's going to be a chance here. But, as, I, as Kyle says, it, the second half was... Never felt pressure like it. It was 44 minutes. I just... Total dominance, to be honest with you. But, but I think we could have maybe squeezed out a draw if we just done a few better things. And, uh, but I... I'm sure we'll maybe get revenge on the end of the season somewhere. It couldn't have been any better though, Kyle, to come back for that that game to obviously beat Darvel away one now. That must have been a massive result. It's, it was a it was a great game, obviously, to, to play in, do you know what I mean? Um I think the the after the disappointment of the Talbot game, I mean to go and play against Darvel, who I mean it's obviously well documented about how everything's happening there with uh, the park with changing rooms where the players are bringing in um, a lot of right good good players I mean to go and play against a team that uh, their expectation is to go and win the league I mean to go and challenge to go and do big things in Scottish football um, to go and beat obviously Darvel 1-0 away I mean it was a great result um, it, was a, it was a good performance again I think I think Kieran will probably say the same I, I can't really remember the big man making a save I mean, it was quite a comfortable game. As defenders as well, I was I was quite surprised at how comfortable it was for us. We weren't really under a, a, a kind of barrage of, a, kind of goals and shots and crosses. It was, I mean, I think the possession starts for them would have been through the roof. I mean, but us as a team, we were, we were hard to beat that day. And it was, you were happy with them having the ball 50, 60 yards away for your goal. I mean, they're not going to score for there. They're not going to do anything for there but in and around the box I mean they've got right quality quality players that will, that will cut you open and if you give them half a chance I mean they'll take it Aye, definitely Kieran would you go along with that the, the Darrell game was a massive win for, for the club and obviously the they couldn't have been any better obviously going there and picking up a massive three points oh, 100% aye it's, it, Darrell similar to Paul can go in in games well I feel like we were hard to beat Resolute and I don't think we've showed that in other games, to be honest with you. But aye, it was a great three points, and, and that was another one you think you've maybe turned the corner. But aye. <laughs> the league obviously can kind of, after that can kind of Darvel game, it was a it was true next, the four three defeat. My one of my pals that were at the game said it was end to end stuff and anybody could have won it. <laughs> Would you go along with that, Kyle? Same again, it was it was a game where I think every time you were at the park, you felt that you were going to score. And I think when they were attacking, you're like, by the way, they're going to score here or not. Yeah. I mean, I think that the game could have finished <laughs> in 20 each. Um, it was just one of the games. Um, a decent standard, good goals. Um, but I just, just a, a, a right open, open game. You know I mean, and I think it was obviously, it was during the week that game as well. So it was just a weird, weird feeling. Kieran, 4-3 against Strun. That's game where the, it was non-stop. Yeah, that is. <laughs> Did it feel non-stop? Just that I was like... Aye. It was, it was a, a right ding-donger, to be fair. Yeah, aye. It was, as Kyle says, it was the end-to-end stuff. You can get a breath for, for watching the ball going in the net. <laughs> <laughs> aye. It, and it was... To be honest with you, that's another game that goes either way and you get your three points and then on the night the Troon walked away with three points which I felt like but teams like that coming to your home ground and picking up three points scoring four, four goals it's to be honest with you I don't, I don't think it's acceptable but we'll, I think we'll, we'll get there eh? we'll get there You pick up a good 3 now one against Blantyre as well Kay. was that a, is probably the, the best performance of the season? Um, I, I think it'd be close between that and the Rossville game, the setting, the setting game of the season. Um, I think the, the both of them, it was, it, it was a comfy game. So it was obviously the three 0 um, again could have scored four, five, six, seven, um, made it a right, right convincing score line. I didn't really feel we were troubled too much in defence. Similar again, can I remember Kieran making very many saves. 
Um, but aye, it was it was a, a same again. It was a, a good reaction, obviously, to the, the disappointment in the training game. Hearing good result against Blantyre, are we happy with it? Yeah, aye, that's probably up there with the most comfortable game we've played. Knocked the ball a bit well, used the pitch space and that well. Boys up the top, scoring three goals. Got to be happy with that. That was obviously your, your last one of the season in the league. The the draw against Bonnet, was that disappointing, Kev? It was disappointing for me, aye, because I think I last it was at four minutes into that game. <laughs> uh, a concussion, been event, Saki Tatties, fucking American sniper at the side of the park. Um, <laughs> So obviously for for, for likes of that game there, uh, it was only until when was it the Monday or the Tuesday when I was to kind of watch the highlights to actually see much about the game. Um, but a, a disappointing defeat uh, uh, to to lose a goal obviously in the last kick of the ball basically half the guys arse and then Gian. I mean it was it was obviously a badging. Um, I, I didn't realise that Tony and Branco get sent off. <laughs> when can they tell you about that? Uh, but I, as I say, I think obviously Kieran will be able to tell you a better about that game. Kieran, fellas, in that bonding game, what happened? Uh, well, I was at the side of the park with Tony and Branco. I broke my ribs against Toon, so I was out for that game. So I had a frustration, and I kind of bought it. But the 60th minute, the two of them just boiled over. And frustrating performance, and the coaches at the side done the exact same thing. And you could just see Branco went to the right, Tony went to the left, and they stood behind the, <laughs> the barriers and watched the game from there. <laughs> But uh, that was good for the fines. Eh? We got a wee couple of quid for the team that you. Oh. <laughs> we we'll so touch, we'll touching that now earlier because there's a few <laughs> stories with patches about that. Three <laughs> defeats later on, obviously. The next three league games, Clyde Bank, Kill Burnley, and obviously rather going at the weekend. How disappointing has that spell been, Kyle? And how big is it to get, could I get out of that spell as quickly as possible? Well, definitely. Um, I, I think it's, I mean, it's, it's easy to see that, the, the, as I said earlier, the league position that you're in. A season where with seven teams get in. I mean, you, you don't need to be the worst team in the league to get relegated this year. You can have a, a, a good run of games, good points, good wins, whatever. She says, but if you're the twelfth and thirteenth team in the league, I mean, you're struggling. And that's the, the, the be all and end of it. Do you know what I mean? So to to obviously been beat the last few games is something that you want to change quickly. Um, obviously we. The new manager and that coming in, um, you're hoping obviously it gives kind of the team a lift, gives the boys a lift, and uh, you start putting a, a good run of games together. Aye, I would agree with that. Kieran, what was your what's your thoughts been in the, the latest run, the kind of three league defeats? Has it been disappointing? And how big is it to kind of get out of that rough? Aye, I see nobody in the changing rooms happy about the last couple of results, and obviously the latter ones caused Tony to get to lose his job over it and I think us as a dressing room needs to take responsibility the fact that Tony was the head of us and he's lost his jobs due to our, our own downfall in the park um, in a way that the last few results aren't good enough we need to now look forward to the next three and hope that we can now turn the corner pick up nine points and get ourselves up the league table because at the start of the year it was, no, it was noted in the dressing room that it's not just going to take maybe a good run of games you're going to need to be constantly on the ball here with seven yeah. down. so maybe like a bad month could see you right in deep in trouble so hopefully the last three has been bad but I say we need to look forward to the next three and try and get nine points and get ourselves up the table I will touch about your cup runs as well the Scottish Cup was obviously a big one for the club to get into and obviously you drew for Martin a 2-2 draw away Okay, well, that must have been a big kind of boost that you could maybe get the job done at Townhead. But the first, we'll touch a bit in the, the first game, the game up there. How, what went, what, what kind of happened that day? Um, it was a kind of interesting game again. It was a game where I thought we probably could have and probably should have actually won it out there, to be honest with you. Um, and obviously let ourselves down in the second game, but. I mean, it was a senior Scottish. I mean, it was I mean, an unknown for the club, an unknown for obviously a lot of the boys. Um, no one went to expect. I mean, don't get me wrong, good, good team. Um, a lot of boys there in loan for Aberdeen and Inverness and kind of Ross Counties and stuff. So it was a, it was a good standard, good game. But um, ultimately, we, we, we let ourselves down that day. Here in that game up at uh, for Martin, what was that like for you? Uh, it was an up and down game. It was a game where I felt in spells we were 
we were brilliant. See, the part was excellent. So it suited us down to a tee, get the ball down and play. But for Martin held their own, say that that wasn't their first time in the Scottish Cup like ourselves. So they were, mm-hmm. I sort of say, a well oiled machine. But second goal myself, I thought I could have done better. And that was the kind of turning point of the time, to be honest with you. So when I say I was a wee bit hard on myself coming down the bus, and then the following week, it was a tough day at the office, to be honest with you. Aye, that game, obviously, at Townhead was was 5 1 at home. Were they just a far better team, Kyle, on the day? Aye, definitely. Yeah, definitely. They were, it was a completely different team you played for the first game, as I said. Um, a lot more come through in the ball, you know what I mean? It's passing the ball, but spraying the ball, but um, good finishes. Aye, it was, it was a proper. Um, a proper game where you, you dominate it. I mean, the better team won. I mean, there's nothing, nothing wrong to, to pick your hands up and say that. I mean, you're not going to win every game, but um, as I said, it was, a, it was a good occasion, great occasion for the, for the club, great occasion for, for the boys, the fans and stuff, but I hopefully there's there's more of that to come. Aye, absolutely. Obviously, Kieran, that result against for Martin at home, was that disappointing for, for yourself losing five goals? Aye, that was it was a tough day to be honest with you, and they scored quite early on as well. So it was, it was an uphill struggle to start with. But as Kyle says, that's a learning experience for the boys. Maybe it's a couple of them the first time in the senior Scottish, maybe a wee bit of pressure on them. So hopefully next year, if, if we're in the same position again, there we can react better and maybe get a wee into the second round, third round, we get a wee run for the cup. Aye, the the South was obviously another disappointment losing to Blantyre. Okay, was best after beating them in the league. How disappointing was it to lose it in the cup too? I think it's probably the worst game that I've ever been involved in in all my days playing football. It was it was terrible. I mean, it, it was same again. You could talk about that game for for two weeks. Um, it was it was the game after uh, the Bonneton game, so I missed obviously with the, the concu- concussion, but. Watched it to the side of the park, and first thing I said after the game, said to my dad, was that like, we've not been that bad all season, surely? It was like the first game you've actually properly watched. Mm-hmm. It was, oh, it was terrible, terrible. Um, for same again, for everybody on the park, it wasn't, a, it wasn't just into one, one or two boys. It was, I mean, the full eleven, the boys that came on. I mean, it was, it was brutal. Kieran, what went wrong in the park that day? Don't want to make excuses, but the park. <laughs> <laughs> Aye. Um, I see, I was at the side of the park as well. I was still recovering from an injury at the time. Mm. On on the park, it just looked like it was just a battle of who could win second balls. And we were, we were, we were second to most of them. And that was the reason maybe the defeat came. It was a, it was a tough day. I it was in the dressing room after the game. Everybody's distraught, to be honest with you. Because you really want to go and put a wee cut run together. It gets the fans and you're on your side gets the team on your side the committee and everything else and a wee buzz about it if you get to a semi or a final it's, it's a good day out and they go up so early it was bitterly disappointing I obviously the Junior Cup as well it's been a case of two penalties one for you one against you the, the Glen Afton game obviously he's won in penalties then the last game which we were at he's lost in penalties I thought the Lags game you were by far the better team first half and lives grew into it. Would you go along with that, Kyle? And what nah, was, before we go into that, before we go into that, what was your, the thoughts of beating Glen Afton? A good game again. Um, it was a, I was, I missed, missed that game as well, so I kind of watching it. But it was a, it was a good game for for both sides. I mean, um, I mean Leon Murphy's goal. I mean, you're not going to see very many better yeah. goals than that all season. Got inside his left foot. Um, but no, it was a, it was a, it was a, a good reaction for the boys. Obviously, for going to penalties and obviously winning in penalties. Um, but as you said, obviously with the, with the last game as well, it was uh, just shows you. I mean, you, you win one game in penalties, the next game you get beaten penalties. It's just it's fat, but it's one of the things. No. Kieran, the junior cup, obviously a big, a big result beating going after in penalties. But was it disappointing as well to lose lose to Largs in penalties? Aye, well, going after I had the kind of same similar vibes as we played Talbot, a kind of local derby, and uh, over your local rivals, obviously Kyle's ex team. I'm sure he got a few pelters off the boys. But aye, uh, we've done cracking that night, to be honest with you, because into the penalties and it's a 50 50, you know what I mean? It's as you say, that week you win, the following week you yeah. lose. The last game was a hard one to take because the first 45 minutes we were cruising, and I think the only Thing that let us down there was they go and get a second or a third goal, and then we let Largs back into the game late on. And as it in 50 50 penalties at the end, of it, and then to see ourselves in a wee defeat, it's not nice. 
Aye, definitely. That's obviously been your, your season so far. We'll touch a bit and obviously some other wee things when we look at later on, but we'll t- touch a bit in both your careers. Obviously, he's a, Kyle, you've been on the show before and we spoke a bit about your career, but for anybody who hasn't seen the show that you did with Chessie and obviously Shankers was on, what was your memories like uh, growing up in the game and obviously coming through at Rangers? Brilliant, brilliant. Um, I was at mostly at Air United and that uh, pro youth pro before I went to Rangers. Mm-hmm. Um, went there when I was 14, 15 and was there to was what, 21, 22. Um, so great, great memories. Um, played with some bright good players, played against some very good teams, um, managed to go to Italy in tournaments, go to Germany, go to Holland. Um, I mean, loads of great experiences that, that still, I mean, will love forever with me. Um, obviously managed to, to make my debut for the club that I support as well, which was yeah. which was unbelievable. Um, played, obviously, played a few games and it's stuff that, that dreams are made of, do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. I will, we'll touch me back on, obviously, your time at Rangers. We've got a couple of questions about your time at Rangers later on. But, Kieran, you had a similar kind of... Can I join the obviously at Queen's Park then St Marin? What was your memories like at the, those two clubs? Queen's Park was excellent. You know, I mean, they're a, one of the best run clubs in Scotland, to be honest with you. Their, their youth setup was second to run. Playing in the Glasgow Cup and playing against Celtic Rangers, Partick Thistle, and obviously your league duties as well. It was excellent. Um, it's actually through my school that I get picked up with St Marin, playing in the, the Scotland school boys. So then that, that kind of led on to my St Marin career. Leaving school, going full time for three years, it was it was excellent. It was really a big big learning curve for myself. You're mixing in with not only like under twenties boys, you're mixing in with the first team. Being being a goalie, you're you're always training with the first team goalies. You're always pushing yourselves. At the time, it was a uh, Craig Sampson. And, oh, ah, it was Craig Sampson and, and Mary and Kelo uh, goalies like that. So well, well, seasoned pros. And I thought I'd, I'd learned a lot. Um, it says it tailed off a wee bit. I picked up a few injuries and that and then ended up going down to part-time, which was which was fine with me because at the end of the day, I, I've got to sell a job as well. So it worked out all right. Brilliant. Kyle, how did, the, how did you end up going to Glenafton? How, how did that come about? So I'd, um, the, I'd left Alwa in the summer. Um, so I was getting married and that. Tammy, can you grab me a charger, please? <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, obviously went, went obviously part time at Alwa. Uh, obviously left there in that summer. I was um, getting married, um, so go married, come home, everything else. Uh, our, our oldest was, was starting school. Um, you know, I mean, all, all my days in, the, in football, but I've been travelling here there, and everywhere. Obviously yeah. staying in Covenant, um, on, on loan to Breakin, two and a half hours away from the house. Alwa on the half, Dunfermline on the half tours, Glasgow. So. It was nice to be a bit closer to home. Um, obviously, I did have some uh, some offers again for for a few different teams, but it was never the kind of right time. Kind of all the family reasons, and um, as I said, kind of travelling, we want to start in school. So it was a decision I made. Obviously, to come a bit closer to home. Um, I'd, I'd spoke to spoke to Cumnock, spoke to Talbot, uh, spoke to the Glens. Obviously, in that summer, um, my dad does some work for for Tarzan. The, the Fell obviously the runs the Glens, yeah. Um, so it was a kind of it was a, a, a good decision. Obviously, my, my first season at the Glens, you, you go and win the league, go in the Scottish, go in even time. So it was a great decision, football wise. It made pals for life. I mean, at the Glens, a, a, a great, great team, um, great squad, boys that, that run the, 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 the team off the park. I mean, brilliant. I mean, couldn't say a bad word about them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've always said you on you'll be chasing. Uh, that was a an entertaining show for him to the <laughs> watch. So, well, obviously, if you want, we'll post a link to that as well because there were some great stories about your time of the there. Kieran, what obviously when you left St Marin, how did you find going part time before you eventually went to Coburnley? Uh, going part time is actually quite good for myself. I say I ended up at Albion Rovers and. I didn't play as much as I would like, but that team we were in, we ended up going and winning the league. So it was, at 19, 20 year old, it was something that I, and I wasn't really, wasn't really used to, to be honest with you. Get, that was my first time in a, in a, in a kind of, a men's environment, constantly playing football. And to be like a backup goalkeeper for a season, but for us to also go and win the league, it was an unbelievable experience. So every week you're going to, maybe up to Elgin or doing to, 
down to Berry and not picking up three points. And then it gets to maybe March or April and think to yourself, you've actually got a chance here of winning this. I think we won it in the second last day. So it was one of the, probably one of the best times I've had um, in football, even though I didn't play as much. But the experiences and the players I played with that time, I still speak to a few of the boys now, and it was it was excellent. I really was. Brilliant. You've obviously went to come not in the past couple of seasons. Kyle obviously took you a bit longer than you originally thought to get get played for come not. What's it been like? Obviously, the the past year or so, obviously no playing and then getting into the come not team. Oh, it's been up and down. Do you know what I mean? Obviously, with the, the whole COVID, can you carry on? Um, you're in pre season for a week, then you're off for two, then you're in for a couple, then you're off for one, and I mean, it's been off obviously stop start, but no, it's been great. It's just, obviously, there's a, a few of the boys I know for, for playing pro use, for obviously playing against them. I mean, it's a, it's a great group of boys. Um, obviously, with Tony and that and the manager, um, he's, he's bathroom staff. I mean, great guys, uh, great boys off the park. So, no, it's, been, it's been really good so far. Brilliant. Kieran, how excited are you to, to be at Covenant now and which I can hope to expectations for them? So I've got the utmost respect for Tony and, and Branco, Stuart and Biscuit and that to bring me to come up because I, I went playing against come up in previous seasons. You can tell they're a massive club, they're a sleeping giant to be honest with you. Um, but I come up, I've been made to feel really welcome and it's been good. This is, I've only played maybe about 20, 30 games through COVID and things like that, but we stopped start season. But the, the club, the club is well ran, you can tell that. Uh, Social club, the part, the facilities are well looked after. Changing rooms are brilliant. Um, aye, it's, it's a great club to be at. Yeah, definitely. We're going to obviously go back. We'll go back to talk about the club later on. But we've got a few quick fire questions. Obviously, if you've seen the show before, you'll know we we asked the manager the quick fire questions and the, the player, the teammates questions. We're going to actually change all of this week. And both of you is asking answering both of the questions. So. We'll start with Kyle, Kieran. You might you've got a few minutes here to think of your answers because you'll get right. Kyle get the questions first. <laughs> Kyle's on the spot. All right, are we ready here, Kyle? Yeah, right, on the spot. Van Bronckhorst or Costa Coglu? Van Bronckhorst, easy. Messi or Ronaldo? Messi. Favorite film? Ooh, Step Brothers. Best manager played under? Jack Ross. Won the league or won the Scottish Cup? Won the Scottish Cup. You can pick three players from other teams in the Premier Division to play with in the team. Who would you have? Question. Um, who would I play with? Uh, I'll say we Shankers, obviously because he's here and that could be a player as I well. Love that, say that. I'll get slagged if I don't. <laughs> um, who else can I say? Oh, good question. Um... I'll say I'll say we Shankers. I'll say I'll say Jason Ma at Darvel. Obviously okay. played with him at Alwa. Great nice. player. Um and I'll say Andy Stullen, actually, at Darvel as well, played with him Don Fairman. Top top players. Very good. Best character you've met in football. Um gonna say Tad, gonna say Ryan Boris. Played with Tad at the Glens. Um Ted could be 50 year old and still act like a, a daft five year old win. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute fruit loop. Best dressing room story. Best dressing room story. <laughs> um, I don't know if I said that actually the last time I was on about Wee Shankers. I mean, Wee, Wee Shankers is I mean, a lovely, lovely boy, but fucking thick as mince. <laughs> uh, playing at Air United. And uh, by Kevin Kyle, who's obviously playing there up front. So, uh, Kelzo, the cat man, used to call uh, Big Kev uh, Bison Aye. because he's fucking huge and he's, he's massive. So, during the game, the game's going on, and uh, Shankers is shouting, Dyson, Dyson, he's the ball. Dyson. <laughs> you did tell us that. Everybody's all looking around about, oh, what the fuck are you talking about? So, uh, that's his name. His, name's, his name is Dyson. <laughs> Honestly, brilliant. There's yeah, tons of stories about Aye, Shankers out here. But I would. Best player played with? Um, Lee Wallace, maybe, at Rangers. Who's the, wor- who's the worst? Oh, I don't know if I can answer that, to be honest <laughs> with you. I'll say Big Kieran. <laughs> best player played against? Um, best player played against? Um, best player played against? Played against uh, Ben Arthur. 
in pre a pre-season game. This was obviously with Newcastle. I mean, the guy was an absolute joke. I plus you, plus you, Most embarrassing moment. Most embarrassing moment. I scored a few own goals, so they're obviously never, they're never great. Uh, I probably say own goals. Favorite other sport. Favorite other sport. American football. American. NFL. Best moment in football. I'd tough to say. Make my debut, obviously at Rangers. Um, I mean, as a, a boyhood fan, I mean, it's as I said earlier, it's what dreams are made. So I mean, to go and play for the team you support, and I mean, that was unbelievable. Brilliant away. Kieran, are you ready to be put in the spot? Aye. Are <laughs> you second in it? There we go. Uh, is Kieran we're ready to be put nice. in the spot? Yep. Van Bronckhorst or Posta Coglu? Posta Coglu. Messi or Ronaldo? Ronaldo. Favourite film? A uh, law abiding citizen. Very good. Good choice. Best manager played under? Stephen Swift. Win the league or win the Scottish? Scottish. Best character you've bet in football? Stephen Thompson. St. Marin Stephen Thompson. Oh, what a guy, man. <laughs> the funniest guy you'll ever meet in your life. Hilarious. Sports scene. Sports scene the, the presenter of sports scene. Yeah, but honestly, one of the funniest guys you'll ever meet. Definitely. Best dressing room story. Um, I don't know if I should say these online if honest with you. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's a few um, boy Gary White's birthday at St Mirren so he's come in with the clobber and thinking he's uh, really big time in that so he's come in he's done his training he's hanging up his stuff and that he's been out to the, a couple of the boys have sneaked in just before he's come in for training and he's with cut wee holes in his t-shirt and he's just and wee holes in his shorts and things like that uh, he's came in got his shower and that, pulled on his T-shirt or he's got holes everywhere. We then get him outside into, into the car park and we get the tyres on him, we tape him up, put him into the tyres and then roll him up and down the park. He says, it wasn't his happiest birthday, put it that way. <laughs> you can pick three players from other teams in the West of Scotland Premier Division to play with you at Cumberland. Who would they be? It's a tough one. Darn another Davo. Cracking player. Um... It's a hard one, that, to be honest with you. Big Leishman, to be honest with you, I'd like to train with Big Leishman. Cracking big goalkeeper. Um, and third one would be... Um, it's a hard one. Can't really think here. <laughs> Michael Byrne for Glen, uh, Glen Cairn. He's a player with Big Mick big already. He's a legendary guy, but it's a cracking last one. Brilliant. Best player played with? John McGinn. Worst. <laughs> well, he says me, so I'll say Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> Best player played against? Played against? Probably in one of the youth days, Islam for us, when he was at Celtic. Yeah, Brilliant. Crack, honestly, I think I was only 14 or 15 year old, and this boy could do things with a ball you've never seen before in your life. By cracking player. Most embarrassing moment? Mm. Oh... I don't love this one, do I? Get uh, chipped on Sky Sports for playing for Scotland against England. Don't love it doing my mates. <laughs> who, who chips you? Uh, I'm not really sure what the boy's name, but I was on Sky Sports St James's Park. Everybody was watching, and it's an embarrassment moment for myself. <laughs> Favorite other sport? Ah, uh, NFL. I'm the same as Kyle. Very Something good. we regularly talk about. Well, that's just both us, actually. We've got our best quarterback in the NFL. Kyle, go first. Right now? Aye. I don't have to say Patrick Mahomes, but, I mean, the, obviously, big big Tom Brady's not I mean the best ever. Not I mean, it's... Kieran, who have we got? Well, I'm a Chiefs man myself, so I'm going to have to say Mahomes as well. Mahomes. Final question. Best memory in football? Probably you winning the league with Albion Rovers or winning the league with Clyde. So you, you always remember the trophies you win, so I 
both of them. Definitely. We'll move on to putting some of your teammates under the under the microscope. You obviously, you guys are both going to get. It's just usually the player, one player that gets this questions, but you're both here, so you're both going to get the questions. You could just ask answer one after the other. So, are you ready for this? Yep. yep. Who's the best trainer at Cumnock? Best trainer at Cumnock? I'd say Big Jamie Wilson. Kieran, I'd agree with that. I'd agree with that. Who's the worst? Um, who's the worst? Harsh. I should. <laughs> You're reading my mind there, by the way. <laughs> Best dancer. Best dancer. See, with our Christmas night last week, so I'm trying to think actually who was throwing some moves. Honestly, we call him Veach. We call him Veach was, was flinging his cell about. <laughs> I seen Adam Martin come out of a smoke machine about three o'clock in the morning doing the Michael Jackson. Windows, <laughs> <so I'll see laughs> Who's got the best potential to be a future manager? Um. Kitchen manager. I ain't Kieran, to be fair. I ain't, oh. I, ain't the, I ain't the big man could do all right, actually, when you hear him talking that. I mean, he, he speaks a good game. I'd say big Kieran. Kieran, would you agree? Uh, I don't know if I agree with manager side. Of it. Maybe I go away, coach, at a push. <laughs> nah, big Kyle knows his stuff. If, to be honest with you, Tony and that put a wee bit of emphasis on Kyle. He says he's bit after games and everything he says was bang on so I say, I'd say Kyle Brilliant. Team Hardman Jamie Wilson nah exactly nah, nah, I mean the boy yesterday MMA and stuff like that I mean if <laughs> you're not going to say 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 a fucking end ball that bit why I'm going to disagree with you I'm going to say Finlay Fry he thinks he's a hard man but that's it <laughs> <laughs> who's the most skillful most skillful uh, we Paul Smith. We Paul. Paul's a Paul's a cat, and we play. So is I Paul. We Paul Smith. I would say Jim. I'd say Jamie Wilson. Jamie Wilson pulls off some some skills, some some cracking skills. I. I think he done one away to Darvel. I think we end up that's where we get our goal for. So I Jamie Wilson. Who's the quickest? Jamie Con. Yeah, I quite agree with that. Definitely. Who's the slowest? I could, I could work there to be fair um, <laughs> who's the slowest Big Rory in fact I'll, I'll be having a race aye Big Rory Big, big Rory slower than me <laughs> <laughs> I'll go for myself I can't I can't sprint best character in the dressing room We Finley We Fun We, we Fun's one of the one of the best boys you'll ever meet in your life I mean, cracking me, guy. Aye, uh, me and Finlay bounce off each other. I say he's a blue half of Glasgow, I'm a green half of Glasgow, <laughs> so it's good. Aye, I'd say Finlay as well. Cracking guy. You've just had your worst night out. Who had the worst dress sense that night? Ooh. Oh. Worst dress sense. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say harsh again, purely for the fact that. He was wearing the hat, and the hat was about fucking six inches off. Aye, I'm totally agreeing with that. I was going yeah, to say that. Can't I am brew under it, aren't you? Aye. <laughs> <laughs> final, final question. Who's the teacher's pet? Teacher's pet. I got Aldo. I got Aldo. The teacher's pet, aye. Aye, I'd say so. Right, as you know, if you've seen the show before, you know we get some sources to give us some information about you behind the scenes, and we've got a few here, so let's just get into them now. We'll start with the first one here. Where does Kieran, sorry, I don't know you, who are you, come from? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, no, no, no. Listen, that's that's an interesting thing, mate. I can't disclose that in (laughs) public. We'll just leave that one at that. <laughs> just been reliably informed that Big Keenan was in New York a few years back and was randomly being stopped for photographs but didn't know why. After one photograph, he was asked if he ever caught Kevin McAllister. <laughs> 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 I think it asked Jamie Wilson, aye. I'm not that saying that. Aye. <laughs> aye. That's who that is. I'll get him back for that. 
What was the best? What was give us two or three stories from the Kalil team night out? This is far. You can both answer this. Um, See, I've already said one. I say, you, me and we, Paul Smith, end up back in the club about, about three, half three. And Adam's, Adam Martin, just out of nowhere, we were just at the bar, out of nowhere, comes out the smoke machine, half three in the morning, he's self. <laughs> so, Jesus Christ, where have you been all night? <laughs> um, I'll know because... No, any stories in the train, no? See, I, I, I get a card down, so... I know, on the train, no, to be honest. No, the train wasn't the bad, actually. I think that was before, you know, the drinking started. So I think if only sense was going to be said, it would been the train on the way down. I don't know about the train on the way home. Um, I think... Well, uh, there's, there's obviously think, a few of the boys trying buds and stuff, but, I mean, you're not wanting to incriminate anybody just in case, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I'm not saying names, but they can't they know who they are. Kyle, this is for you. Who was your favourite Alan McCoy story at Ibrox? Favourite Alan McCoy story? Um, Alan McCoy story. Oh, see, see, obviously, my time there. See, obviously, what was happening at the club at the time? Right. Do you know what I mean? With, obviously, administration and everything else. I mean, don't get me wrong, I mean, you were still getting a laugh and a joke and a carry on, but it's probably the only time I would have said where he's been half serious and probably has to be kind of half serious, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, you're you're getting a kind of laugh and a joke and that and at training and stuff, but I mean, five minutes after that, he's, he's away trying to make sure that come, uh, make sure that Rangers don't go bust, do you know what I mean? But um, he loved, he loved his cricket right enough, loved his cricket. I mean, I mean we went to Germany pre season. And uh, we were on the on the on the plane, and we're sitting down there just at the front, getting ready to take off. And a big cheer come up for Banyi. Turned out it was cause England had, had won some fucking cricket game. <laughs> Don't know what it was, but I love his cricket. Aye. Brilliant, Kieran. How many times did John McGinn score worldies on at you? John McGinn's technique's frightening, and his bum's even better. I'm telling you, <laughs> nah, John. John was excellent when we played together. He actually, when my first season there, he, he, he never played. He had a problem with, I think it was his hips or his, or his groins or something like that. And he, he battered the gym for a full season. Uh, barely played. Came back. Captain does. Then he actually ended up getting his wee move into the first team. He was honestly a cracking, cracking player. And probably did score a few worldies into me, but I'll not let him give him that satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> Can you ask Kyle about his debut for the Glens in a friendly against Anne Bank? And I quote, had a nuke and everyone was like, did he play for Rangers? <laughs> nah, I don't know about that, to be fair. Um, I'm back in pre-season, see, but honestly, that was obviously my first kind of introduction to the juniors. So we went there, obviously I've turned up my bits and stuff like that, and it's probably the longest grass I've ever played on in my life. I mean, you were, the ball was getting stuck underneath your feet, you were fucking falling out of them. I mean, <laughs> you're like, oh no, here we fucking go, what have I done? <laughs> Is it true that you leaked the picture of the naked picture of a certain goalkeeper at a Scottish Cup final? <laughs> Unbelievable, isn't it? Is the, oh, we, see, well, she, right, I she, didn't she, know any of that until oh, the day, by the way. See, see when that before you get 10, right? So obviously, <laughs> you know, you've just won the Scottish Cup, everyone else, I mean, folks are coming in at the changing room. I didn't notice it. It, it was, uh, was it my wee sister? I was at my missus. It was one of the two of them that said, oh, by the way, you seen what's on Facebook? I'm like, I have a few photos of obviously the boys in the changing room and stuff. Didn't realise that Brian's in the background, obviously, with the bobby. <laughs> this is from Brian, actually. This is one of the sources I will reveal. Ask, ask him what it was like to sit beside Brian in a changing room for four years. Was he as hard work as he thought he was? Brian was brilliant, as I said earlier on. I mean, boys that just Brian's a winner, so that's that's what it is. He's, he's, he's a winner. Um, he's probably the only goalkeeper I've ever played with that doesn't like then shooting and training. Fucking hates it. Doesn't like diving about. Um, but no, it's just Brian, a, a, a great guy, lovely, lovely guy. I mean, but I think probably the same as every goalkeeper. Every goalie's fucking crazy, isn't they? I think they have to be to win goals. He's he's definitely one of them. Um, we've got a final question here that's just come through. Have you got a favourite Stephen Thompson story, Kieran? Oh, 
But honestly, it's probably not a story that it happened to me personally. But if you've got a spare five minutes, see if you log on to YouTube and type in Stephen Thompson Burnley bus. Just go and watch that. It's it's why the weirdest, funniest moments, yeah, I guess, fucking life. <laughs> it's brilliant. No, I'd say that one. Brilliant. But we're obviously going to take a look at what's coming up. Obviously, it's been all change at Cumnock over the past few weeks. Before we get into talking about the, the new manager, obviously Brian got the job last night. How much are you thankful for Tony's time there, Kyle, when which I can overall take away as a Tony's time at the club? I, I, I got on really, really well with Tony. Um, got on really well with, with, with Tony, with, with Branco, with Stuart, with Biscuit. I mean, I, I, I generally couldn't say a bad word. This was about any of them. Um, really, really nice folk away from the, the football as well. Um, I mean, obviously when when my grand there was wasn't there obviously well when she passed. Yeah. Fair, every one of them all texts me. Obviously, hope everything's all right. Hope the family's okay. Blah blah blah. So, I mean, gentlemen, that's that's exactly what I mean. And obviously, it was it's it's, it's, it's one of the things. It's it's no nice to see anybody lost their job. Um, obviously, for whether it's right, whether it's wrong, whether it's indifferent. I mean, us as players, we can't take the day with that. But ultimately, I mean, we've. We we'll, we'll let them down. Do you know what I mean? That's as Kieran said earlier. That's obviously why he ended up losing losing his job. Kieran, how much will you be thankful for the the backroom team that were that the club and Tony as well? Hi, uh, so I've got massive respect for Tony. I've obviously playing against these teams when I was younger. Always knew hard to say up and things like that. And then to actually be in his team. So he, he, he took me for Coburn. I wasn't having the best time at Coburn. He signed me for Cumnock, put a lot of faith in me, gave me a number one jersey within two or three days of signing me. So I, I will always have massive respect for Tony and I wish him all the best for his future. Send me Biscuit, uh, Tony, uh, Biscuit, Stuart and Franco. Yeah, absolutely. We, we definitely send my best on to all of them as well. Brian McGinn, he's obviously the new manager. He's obviously got the job last night. Kyle, how excited are you to work with Brian? Obviously, a, a former player at Cumnock and obviously he's a, a good track record in the game. Nah, he's, he's, he's a, obviously a good record. Um, obviously, with his teams he's managed. Um, I think he was, obviously with, with the Meda, obviously when he was there, mm-hmm. um, taking him for relatively nothing, by all accounts, to a right good, good team. I mean, teams were, obviously, what Kieran was saying there, about Tony's team's been hard to play against. <laughs> That was always the case um, against the Meadow. I mean, it was big physical bodies. I mean, it wasn't, a, it wasn't an easy point, never mind an easy three points. So it's something that I'm, I'm obviously looking forward to to playing under um, and hoping that the same obviously applies to us. Kieran, are you excited to work with Brian and how much are you can looking forward to the, the new era at the club? I see we got a, we got a brief talking to Brian last night after, after training and stuff he was saying was... was it was brilliant. It was a breath of fresh air. So I, I'm definitely looking forward to the next coming games because the, the way he spoke last night, the boys look as if he responded even just speaking to him for 10, 15 minutes. So I, it'll be good going forward. Absolutely, yeah. And obviously the, the next few the next few players was a massive run for the club. Ben Bob away on Saturday, then you just go to Pollock and home at Glen Affin before Christmas. Kyle, how important is it to, first of all, secure survival and get back to a winning run? Definitely. As I said earlier, I mean, you don't need to be the worst team in the league this year to get relegated. I mean, so it's definitely something that we are, we've put ourselves in a position and it's we need to get ourselves out of that position, do you know what I mean? So, obviously, you're hoping for a, a good wee run between the and obviously the Christmas break. Obviously, we group, obviously, for, for the Christmas break and have a, a good crack at it, obviously, the second half of the season. Kieran, how big is the next few weeks for, for coming up and obviously getting into kind of the tail end of the season? How is important is it just to get the, the survival for the season? Nah, I think what's important in the next couple of weeks is to set ourselves a target. Yeah. Both, and we're not going to get first, second or third. Do you know what I mean? We need to be top of that mini league out with the bigger teams are obviously not such with the bigger teams, but teams are doing better this year. So we need to set ourselves a target and work towards that for the remaining games of the season. But I if we can get a good amount of points before Christmas, the boys can get into the kind of two-week uh, wee break before the games and recharge the batteries and we'll go for the second half of the season. And obviously, the the one like kind of last thing before we finish up, we, you've got to give credit to the, the set-up at Cumnock as well, considering where the club was a few years ago. Kyle, it is, it is a massive difference, obviously, a few years ago. How good the kind of support and infrastructure been at the club recently? No, def- definitely. I mean, obviously, as a Cumnock boy, um, I mean, I've... 
I played there as a boy, who obviously for boys' club. Um, when whenever I was in the playing, and if the juniors was on, I would go and watch them. Um, it has been massive, massive changes from the last five, ten year. I think. Um, like you say, obviously with Kevin and, and Alistair and Jamie Campbell. I mean, these kind of boys they deserve a lot, a lot of credit. Yeah. I think obviously when when Jamie came in and and started helping out, obviously with the the, the junior social side of things. I mean, it started generating money, obviously for for the social and. If the junior club is doing well, the social does well, you know, obviously vice versa. So, no, these, these guys deserve a lot, of, a lot of credit. Definitely, Kieran. How impressed have you been with the setup at Cromwell Central, man? Uh, to be honest with you, it's the most I've ever seen a committee hands on. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, you at least see one or two of them every time you, you go down to come look, which is the first time I've ever seen it at a football club. You can tell the amount of hard work they're putting in behind the scenes. Uh, I'm not like you, I'm not from Cumlock, but I'm mega impressed the way they set up. So you've got the social club, the the parks, immense. You've got brilliant changing facilities. So I, the club is, as I said before in the podcast, I think it's a sleeping giant. Definitely, yeah, is. Definitely, definitely. But we're going to wish you all the best for the season. It's been an absolute pleasure to be on the show. Thanks very much, you both for coming on. Just Scott, thanks very thanks much. Thanks very much, Scott. That was an absolute pleasure. Brilliant. Thank you very much to everyone who's tuned into the show. Please subscribe to our YouTube and podcast channels. And as always, follow us on social media for more consistent Western Scotland content. Thanks very much, everyone. See you soon. Cheers.